Hello, and thank you for joining us today. My name is Stacy Potter, and I'm a community manager here at WeWorks. It's great to see everyone in the chat and let us know where you hail from and what problems you're trying to solve with GitOps and AWS uh, in the chat. Hopefully you're here today to hear from Dan Boudris, uh, a software engineer from Amazon Web Services, who will be walking you through GitOps with Amazon EKS Anywhere and Flux. If you're brand new to our various WeWorks or GitOps talks, or series, welcome. And if you've been coming to these sessions for a while, welcome back. Uh, a little bit about background. Um, if this is your first time coming to one of these events and we've been that we've been running here, uh, the company that I work for is called WeWorks. If you haven't heard of us, we are a startup with offices all over the world, San Francisco, New York, London, Berlin, as well as distributed and remote teams across the globe. Uh, a lot of what we do is based on open source. You might have heard of our projects Flux and Flagger, which are in the CNCF as incubating projects, and we are in the process of submitting the application to graduate, uh, so hopefully that will be happening soonish. Uh, Flux was also the project that really kicked off the term that our CEO, Alexis Richardson, coined GitOps. Uh, and it's really been cool to watch it spread like wildfire and see the community, especially the Flux community, grow over the last few years. So much so that large organizations like Amazon Web Services and others uh, have adopted it and are uh, using it under the hood to offer GitOps to their customers. If you missed our GitOps one-stop shop event back in October um, of last year, you can find that playlist on YouTube and then watch all of the different vendors who've integrated Flux uh, within their pro products to bring GitOps to their customers. So Cortex is another project um, that we donated to the CNCL, C CNCF uh, that helps make uh, Prometheus scalable. And I mentioned that because Prometheus is a key part of the uh, progressive delivery possibilities with Flagger. Uh, so that's a key option that we have there. And of course, other projects like Weave Ignite, EKS Cuddle, and now Weave GitOps, which is also a free and open source tool uh, that provides GitOps for your various needs and has a UI on top of Flux. And we have many more. Um, if you're interested, definitely check us out on GitHub under WeaveWorks, as well as the CNCF, where you can find a lot of our projects too. And to learn more about us, you can always visit our website at weave.works. So a little bit of housekeeping, as I mentioned before, we've bookmarked for about an hour for today's session. And I'm sure I don't have to explain too much about Zoom uh, these days, but the one thing that I will mention here is that we will take questions through the chat function. Um, so if you can change the two to everyone instead of just panelists and attendee or uh, hosts and panelists, that'll help uh, everyone in the audience see your comment or question. And oftentimes we have audience members who are willing to answer questions and just chat with each other um, in the chat there. So don't be afraid. Please go ahead and change that to everyone. I see most people are doing that anyway already. <laughs> so thanks for that. So uh, a bit on how to connect with, uh, with us and in the Flux community. So visit the website at fluxcd.io to learn more. And if you make your way over to GitHub, please give us a star and then also check out the discussions. Uh, there's a bunch of good discussions there about upcoming uh, work being done, um, issues, things like that, but also a great Q&A there as well if you have any questions about Flux. Um, the Flux team, of course, is on the CNC of Slack under the Flux channel, and if you need an invite, uh, I will drop all of these links into the chat in just a bit. We also have a lot of talks booked for the spring session for our online user group. Uh, so please come back and join us for all of these great sessions. Uh, one I will specifically call out here is actually tomorrow. Um, if you're using Helm, be sure to join us here as Scott Rigby, same bat time, same bat channel, um, but tomorrow. Uh, Scott Rigby, who is a Flux and Helm maintainer, will be taking us on a tour of Flux's Helm controller, and then also showing you how to manage Helm releases using Flux. So that's tomorrow. And for now, I think that's it. So uh, I will bring Dan Boudres to the stage and ask him to turn on his camera and unmute himself. And I will turn it over to you, Dan. Hey, folks. I can, you can hear me? I'm good? We can hear right. you. Awesome. <laughs> uh, well, hey, everybody. Uh, I'm Dan Budras. 
I'm a software engineer at Amazon Web Services working on EKS Anywhere. And I'm going to tell you a lot more about EKS Anywhere, talk a little bit more about GitOps, and then talk about how EKS Anywhere leverages GitOps to provide a better developer experience for provisioning and managing Kubernetes clusters. I'm gonna have a little demo where I'm gonna show you what it looks like to create an EKS Anywhere cluster, and then how you can change some configurations and scale that cluster up using GitOps in real time. Um, and we'll have a couple of minutes there and we can take questions. And I think, um, you know, put your questions in the chat and I'm happy to just have a conversation as we go. So just give me a second, I'm gonna share my screen. Awesome. I don't do a lot of uh, PowerPoint, so I'll have to forgive me here. All right. So GitOps with Amazon EKS Anywhere. As I said, I'm Dan Budris. I'm based in Boston, Massachusetts. A little bit about me. You know, I've worked uh, in various roles, mostly in operations and DevOps. So I've been a sysadmin, a DevOps engineer, and now a software engineer working on everything ranging from, you know, small business networks to production Kubernetes systems um, and everything sort of in between. I've had a great time doing it. You know, I based in Boston MA, um, I love to cook and I love to go birding and I love, uh, you know, working on software systems at scale. So that's me. So what is EKS Anywhere? So EKS Anywhere allows you to create and operate Kubernetes clusters in your data center using the same systems that we use for the managed EKS offering. So that's built off of EKS Distro, which is a Kubernetes conformant distribution that has all the core components that you need to run a Kubernetes cluster. So, you know, you know, a few dozen container images um, and binaries for things like the API server, uh, you know, all of the core DNS, like at CD, all of these things that you need in order to uh, run your cluster. It's used by EKS, it's used by EKS Anywhere. It's open source, you can find it on GitHub. Um, so what we're trying to do is provide a consistent experience and provide a tool that allows customers to have that experience on their, their data center. Right now, we provide you the opportunity to provision clusters onto VMware environments. Um, so vSphere, for example, um, and we're gonna be having bare metal support coming soon. Um, and if you're interested in any of this, we're on GitHub, we're all open source Apache 2. Uh, and you can find our roadmap there, you can check out issues. You can also take EKSA for a spin, which I highly recommend. And I'll put the GitHub link in the chat here in a bit. Awesome. Um, yeah, so here's a little bit more about EKSA, right? So we provide GitOps tooling, which we're gonna talk a lot more about today. Uh, there's a opportunity to connect to the EKS console through the EKS connector. We come out of the box with Celium as a CNI. We of course are a plugin for, our command line is a plugin for EKS Cuddle, uh, where EKS Cuddle Anywhere writes for that consistent experience. We provide the node operating systems. Um, everything is HA out of the box, right? And it's all done with declarative tooling for cluster management, cluster operations, application deployment. Everything is a Kubernetes CRD. It's a Kubernetes spec that you're going to use to provision a cluster. Uh, and I mean, the one of the most important pieces of this whole thing is the cluster API. The cluster API is a Kubernetes Sync project that allows for the management of Kubernetes clusters uh, via the Kubernetes API. So it provides a set of CRDs and controllers that allow you to declaratively create the components necessary for a Kubernetes cluster, and then it'll reconcile those to your given infrastructure provider. Right. So right now we are primarily working with vSphere. So if you have a vSphere environment, even if it's a you know software defined data center in a cloud like AWS, you can basically provide the credentials to 
EKS Anywhere, and that will go through the process of creating all of the necessary cluster API components that will define your cluster. The cluster API then is going to reconcile those back to your data center, create the machines, uh, manage them transparently for you, and bring them into the cluster as Kubernetes nodes. Right. And one of the great things about the cluster API is that it's an API standard here. So we can add more data center providers or infrastructure providers than just VMware. We started there, uh, but working on bare metal where you'll be able to simplify the provisioning of Kubernetes clusters onto uh, bare metal, you know, from, from the machine up. Awesome. Cool, so what is, that's about EKSA, we'll get into more of that. Um, but what is GitOps, right? This is borrowed from uh, OpenGitOps.dev. I think it's probably the best concise definition of the GitOps principles, right? But GitOps is a methodology for using Git to manage your declarative configurations, right? So managing your infrastructure, your applications by checking them into Git, using declarative configurations like Kubernetes, or you could be using Terraform. In this case, we're using Kubernetes manifests. You could be using all kinds of different things, but we're checking them into version control. They're versioned in immutable. They're pulled automatically by a system. In this case, we're using a CNCF flux under the hood for this to automatically pull that desired state from the source. And then it's continuously reconciled into infrastructure. So like, you know, maybe I hope this isn't too much review, right? For a lot of folks on here are probably pretty sophisticated. Um, but one of the things I think about all the time with this is as an operator, right? I was an operator for a while, for a long while. And so often, even if we used Git to check in our infrastructure code, there was no step three, no pulled automatically. It was, you check it in, you get it reviewed, great, that looks good. And then you actually went and ran Terraform apply or kubectl apply to create the resources. And that seems great, it's a great step, but you run into problems where let's say it's reviewed, it looks good, you check it in, you go to apply it and there's a bug and there's some drift or there's a unforeseen circumstance and you have to modify it on the fly in order to get it to work, in order to get your infrastructure to where you want. And then you never go back and check that in, right? That then, reduces the effectiveness of your declarative configuration because you can no longer look at the Git commit history. You can no longer Git log and see the commits and look at the declarative configuration and say, this is an accurate representation of the state of my system currently, which really reduces operator cognitive load to be able to do that and improves your ability to manage larger systems. Um, so, you know, having something like Flux, which enables you to take the state that's checked in and bring it back to the cluster and then the controllers to reconcile that to actually infrastructure, actually reconcile that to infrastructure and move your cluster toward the desired state. Um, it's extremely powerful and it takes a lot of the burden out of operating systems like this. Cool. All right, so EKS Anywhere with GitOps, right? So we use Flux under the hood to enable us to provide that GitOps experience to our users. At its heart, EKSA is a set of Kubernetes CRDs, custom resource definitions, and the controller, which takes those CRDs and moves the cluster toward their declared state. So when you define an EKSA cluster and say, I want a cluster with 10 worker nodes, the controller is gonna be watching that CRD and it will then scale up your cluster to match your desired value. So with Flux under the hood, right, we have Flux continuously monitoring the configured Git repository for changes to the cluster configuration file and syncing that back to your cluster. So if you want to scale your EKS Anywhere cluster or move the data store in, vSphere from one location to another or change the network it's on um, or you know, modify any number of values, you can cut a PR to GitHub. Right now we support GitHub, but we're gonna be expanding to multiple uh, version control providers. 
You can cut a PR, get it reviewed by your team, make sure everything looks good, commit it. And once it's committed, Flux is going to see that, sync it back down to the cluster and update your EKSA cluster CRD to match that state. The controller will then see that change and reconcile it, bringing your cluster closer to the declared configuration. And then you get that immutable configuration. You get the version control, the automatic change control, basically, right, of the PR and the change log and everything. So this is what cluster creation with Flux looks like, right? You have a cluster YAML that defines your EKSA cluster, and we'll take a look at that in a second. And you use the EKS Cuddle Anywhere, the Anywhere plugin for EKS Cuddle to create the cluster. That will then actually create a local bootstrap cluster. It uses Kind for that, Kubernetes and Docker. So it stands up a local Kubernetes cluster in Docker on your local machine and applies the cluster API management components to it. So now you have a local cluster on your machine with all the cluster API management components. Then those management components are going to reach out to your infrastructure provider, let's say vSphere, and create the necessary resources, so the VMs, for example, and bring them in as nodes. Once your cluster is up, it's going to move the cluster API management components from your local machine onto your new shiny cluster in vSphere and tear down that local kind cluster. So now you have VMs with a Kubernetes cluster on them. In this process, what we'll do is we'll actually take the cluster configuration YAML that you've provided and we will commit that to Git and push it up to the provided Git repository. If the Git repository doesn't exist, no problem. It will be created in your Git provider. We'll commit the files necessary to manage your cluster and to configure Flux, right? Because we're using, we're just using Flux under the hood. We're running Flux bootstrap, bootstrapping Flux. It's going to commit everything up into that repository. And then it's going to start watching, right? And it's going to reconcile your Git state back to your cluster. And then your controllers are going to take over from there. Right now we support GitHub, uh, you know, cloud hosted GitHub, um, but we're expanding to more today. All right. So what does this repo sort of look like? Um, what's the story here? We can see the repository structure. This is actually what your Git repository is going to look like whenever you start managing an EKS Anywhere cluster with Flux. So you're gonna have a top level folder that's the name of the cluster. Uh, this is because we have this concept of management clusters and workload clusters. So you have a top level cluster named for your management cluster. Um, then clusters, and then the, each cluster will have an entry under that. So you can have multiple clusters managed in a single repo. We have the GitOps toolkit components, patches, the sync files. So these are all Flux system files that allow you to configure Flux. A lot of them are sort of read-only and committed directly to the repository by Flux at the time of Bootstrap. And then under GitOps demo here at the bottom level, EKSA system, we have your EKSA cluster.yaml. And we'll look at this again in a second. And this should all become more clear if it's not already. That is your actual cluster definition. That's the file you're going to modify and will get synced back to your cluster CRD and then get reconciled into infrastructure. Um, you can see here under GitOps Toolkit Components, this is the uh, gotkpatches.yaml file. What this, why this is important is with EKS Anywhere, we actually build from source all of the container images and binaries that we use as part of EKSA. So we control or attempt to manage the entire supply chain of software and containers that are going into your cluster, right? We're actually using this to ensure that the flux images that are being used are from the public ECR that the Elastic Container Registry um, that we manage and we build images and push them uh, to there and then they're used by your cluster. So this enables us to have a greater level of uh, control over the, the whole supply chain of 
binaries, container images, artifacts, et cetera, that go into your cluster. Cool. So updating the cluster using Flux, right? You're going to change a value. You want to upgrade the Kubernetes version. You want to scale your worker nodes. You change that locally, uh, and you push it to Git, right? Easy enough. Flux controllers are then going to detect that, sync it back to your cluster. And then the EKSA cluster controller will turn that into the cluster API components necessary in order to provision your infrastructure. Cool. So time for demo. Um, this is partly recorded and partly live. So we'll see how that goes. Everybody loves live demo. Uh, but I'm going to show you what it looks like to create an EKSA cluster and talk a little bit about what each step does and why we're doing it. Then I'm going to live demonstrate scaling up uh, your worker nodes through Git ops. And while we watch those worker nodes scale up, which will take a couple of minutes, maybe we can take some questions and have a bit more of a conversation about uh, what we're doing. So I'm just gonna switch my screen sharing. Awesome. So here we are in my pre-recorded terminal. And as you can see here, we're gonna call EKS cuddle anywhere, create cluster, passing it the file, uh, GitOps demo cluster.yaml, which we'll take a look at again in a moment. The EKS Anywhere binary is then going to run through that and run a series of validations um, and provide you with you know, additional information, maybe some warnings about best practices, uh, let you know what it's going to do. And of course, you can you know, put V9 on this and get as more information than you'll ever want. Um, for debugging purposes, but it can be very interesting actually. Uh, so as we can see here at the top, GitHub personal access token has the required repo permission. So what we're doing is we're actually pulling your GitHub personal access token from the environment, the environment variable, and using that to communicate with the GitHub API and verify that we have the necessary permissions in order to perform the actions. Uh, that we want to do because you know nothing's worse than getting all the way through a long process and then having it fail with some obscure error down the road. So we try to put as many validations as possible in to ensure the best user experience here. Um, so you know we're authenticating to vSphere, actually checking our access to the API, validating the existence of the data centers, networks, resources, folders, etc., um, validating all of your config, etc. Then we're gonna create a bootstrap cluster. This is the kind cluster that I, Kubernetes and Docker cluster that I talked about earlier. That's gonna be stood up on your local machine. And we're gonna use that as the initial home for the cluster API management components. So then we'll install the CAPI components on that bootstrap cluster and do provider specific setups. So that's everything we need to do to communicate with vSphere. Uh, then we're gonna create a new workload cluster, right? So that's actually your local Kubernetes and Docker kind bootstrap cluster is going to be communicating with the vSphere API via the cluster API in order to stand up VMs uh, and start bringing them into state as a full fledged Kubernetes cluster. We'll install the networking. So we're gonna put the CNI on there, put Celium on there, um, storage classes. Then we're gonna put the cluster API providers on the bootstrap cluster, um, install the secrets we need. Then we're gonna move the management cluster from your local bootstrap cluster to the workload cluster. So now currently all the stuff that is communicating with your infrastructure provider is on your local machine. That's actually gonna get moved to your newly created cluster so that your newly created cluster will then be self-managing. Install all our CRDs, everything we need in order to exist basically in our controller. Um, and then we'll install the add-on manager and the GitOps toolkit on the workload cluster. So this is the GitOps part. This is what we're here for, right? So we're gonna add the cluster config files to Git. So we're taking that config that you provided, we're committing it to a local Git repository. We've actually 
cloned your provider repository locally, and then we're writing out files to it as the cluster creation happens, then we're going to just go through the process of running, you know, get add and get commit, making commits, pushing them up and making sure that that initial state is ready to go for you. So we're finalizing the commits, pushing everything up, writing the cluster config file, and then deleting the bootstrap cluster. You don't need it anymore. You have a self-managing Kubernetes cluster based on uh, VMware infrastructure, and then cluster created, party horn. It's great. And you know that was sped up a lot. This takes a good bit of time, right? This is uh, this is pre-recorded, as you can see. But that's what it looks like. That's what cluster creation looks like. And so now what I'm going to do is actually show you what it looks like to manage it with GitOps. Um, so let me just switch screens again. Dan, is now a good time to ask you a couple of questions that came Oh, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Sure. So um, Rajiv is asking, is there EKS Cuddle cousins for Azure and GCP, et cetera? I'm sure that you may or may not want to answer that question. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm, I use what works for you. Yeah, um, exactly. <laughs> and I'm sure that there are. I'm not super versed in Azure or GCP, as you might imagine. Totally. Um, but I, I would guess that there are uh, great tools out there for, for managing Kubernetes clusters on those providers. Yeah. Awesome. Um, and then King did ask, does the add-on manager install Flux on the workload clusters? Uh, is this a new feature? Yeah, so it does install it on the, um, well, actually, let me make a distinction. When we first launched, every cluster was its own workload and management cluster. We've since moved to a model or moving toward a model where you can have a standalone management cluster that manages multiple sub clusters, manages multiple workload clusters. Wherever the CAPI components are, wherever the cluster API components and the EKSA CRDs are, so on your management cluster or on a self managed cluster, that's where Flux is going to be because it is managing the state of the management cluster, essentially. Um, and actually, we launched with Flux support. So uh, we're going to be seeing more in the add-on space coming soon. Uh, so stay, stay tuned for that. But when we first launched, yeah, we had Flux support. Um, we talk about it as the add-on manager. Awesome. Thanks. Those are the only two for now. Cool. All right. Um, everybody can see my terminal here. Great. Now's the, the tricky part, right? The live part. Uh, so before we get into all this down here, let's just take a quick look at the cluster YAML. Like, what is what does that look like? Because that's the source of your uh, declarative configuration, right? So here we are. We have the API version, which is anywhere.eks.amazonaws.com, and we are in alpha one. And here's the cluster kind. So this is our cluster CRD. I named it GitOps demo. And we have the spec which contains the configuration for your cluster, right? So how many control plane nodes do you want? And what IP do you want them to have? What network do you want to have, right? What CNI do you want to use? What Kubernetes version are you on? Uh, worker node group configurations. So we just added support for multiple worker node groups. At launch, we only had one. Um, meaning I can scale this worker node group named work, WNGC1, worker node group configuration one. I can scale this independently of the WNGC2 here, and I can name them different things. I can give them different backing uh, configurations. So for example, if I, as you can see, they have this machine group ref. Um, if we go down to the machine group refs, so we have these machine configs, uh, and this tells us like what resource. If you're you know familiar with uh, VMware systems, right? Like what resource pool do we want it in? What data store? What folder? So you can organize things clearly, uh, and then right, how many gigs do you want in the disk? How much memory and CPU do you want? And so conceivably, right, you could have multiple worker node groups that you want different node labels or taints on. 
and you want them to have different backing infrastructure to support different classes of workloads. You know, you want to run one on something that has access to GPUs. You want to run another on something that's like really bare bones and cheap and best effort. Like you're going to be able to back different worker node groups with different machine configurations and scale them independently, uh, depending on what your, your use case is, right? Um, and then let's see the some more important parts, GitOps ref. So this is the saying my cluster uses GitOps and points to the GitOps demo, GitOps config, which ta-da is right here. So this is saying we're using Flux. Flux is our GitOps provider. Uh, we're using GitHub. Right now we only support GitHub. We're gonna be expanding that, as I said. Um, it's a personal GitHub account as opposed to an organizational account. Um, and it's a repository name, right? GitOps demo and the owner is me, Dan Budris. Okay. So what this actually does is it gives you everything you need to start the cluster with GitOps. When you run, when you saw when I ran create, it basically took these values and then got the personal access token from the environment, validated the connection to the GitHub API, uh, did all of that to make sure this was correct and then committed those those files up to it. And so this config, which is the one I used to create the cluster, actually lives down here. In so I have GitOps demo folder. This was created at the time I launched the cluster. It'll create a folder with your cluster name. And it has a Git repo in it. So if I go into Git and then into cluster name, here we go. So I'm on branch main and I'm up to date with main. Uh, as you can see, this is the same directory structure that we saw earlier, where we have the cluster configuration down here at eksacluster.yaml. Here it is, boom. Same thing we just looked at with Vim. So if we want to scale up, right, let's take a look here. I've got uh, a watch running on cube control to look at the nodes that we have. We have our worker node group one, our worker node group two. We have our control plane. We have three nodes that are running. Here are the machine deployments. This is a CAPI cluster API concept. Um, it's like a Kubernetes deployment, but it pertains specifically to the underlying hardware of the machine, right? So you'll have a, let's say you want to scale up, you would increase the number of replicas in your machine deployment. So we'll see that roll out here in a second. And then here are the uh, Flux controller, the customized logs. So the customized controller logs. So what we'll see is when we make a change, it's watching right next run in 10 minutes um, to reconcile the state of your remote repository with your local system. We, you'll see this log, you know, increase whenever I make changes because it's going to detect the changes to the remote and it's going to reconcile that. So what I'm going to do is just uh, let's see. I'm actually just going to take a look at my cluster config here. And we're going to actually scale this up to three. We're going to scale worker node group one up to three, and we'll scale two up to two. And then this is like, you know, really minor, but I think this is super awesome and important. I'm about to commit this, and I can just be like, you know, git commit scaled one, two, three, scaled two, two, or demo. So I'm like getting automatic change control, right? I'm getting a change log of my infrastructure uh, right here without any additional effort. It's just my normal workflow. And then I can just push this up to main. So what we'll see here um, and this might be a great time to take some questions or have a little bit more conversation because what we're going to see here is the worker nodes 
are going to scale up. We'll see the machine deployments start to spin up new replicas. They'll go into unavailable and then update it and then ready and then updated. And then we'll see new uh, nodes join the cluster. And that's going to take a couple minutes. Great. So I will pop in with some questions that have been going on in the chat. Um, so right before you started your demo, or maybe right as you were starting, um, someone had commented, are we not skipping a little with the EKS setup with security group, IAM, et cetera? And I think that you were just about to dive into that, but let me know if that is inaccurate in any way. Well, so what's interesting about EKS Anywhere is that we're a completely open source project that is entirely divorced from the Amazon cloud. Part of the use case for EKS Anywhere are uh, you know, environments that have unreliable internet connections or are fully air gapped, right? So like if you're a cruise ship and you wanna run a cluster of Kubernetes, no, a Kubernetes cluster on your ship to manage the various components, of your system, you don't have reliable internet. So you need a completely offline system. EKSA uh, does not connect back to AWS unless you want it to. You can use the EKSA connector to get a console experience, but otherwise it is entirely detached from the actual Amazon cloud. Right. So there's no security group set up or anything. Yeah, you can just pick it up and start using it without even having an AWS account. Just go to GitHub and follow the instructions. We have a Docker provider, so you can do it locally too. You don't even need a vSphere environment. And then we have another question that says, is it possible to have hybrid configuration with EKSA? So is it possible to have node groups deployed in EKSA to work with AWS managed EKS? Yeah, that's something that a lot of people ask about. Um, we don't have that right now, but it's definitely something that people are talking about. And I think we're just going to sort of see where where things go in terms of uh, user interest in that. Because um, right now it is a sort of standalone experience that allows you to provision that cluster and then you manage it through the EKSA CRDs and command line that we provide. Yeah. And then two more, uh, and then I can let you get back to it. Uh, how does the node group Kubernetes version upgrade? How is that performed? And do we add a new node group and manually drain old node group or is there an automated way? Yeah, so upgrades right now are performed using the uh, EKS Cuddle Anywhere upgrade command. So we felt that for things like a Kubernetes upgrade, like a full, version upgrade, we wanted more control. So it's built into the command line tool and it will perform all the actions that you need in order to move from one Kubernetes version to another. And it will actually do all of that for you automatically in terms of scaling the nodes and draining the old nodes and bringing up new ones and joining them to the cluster. You know, that being said, it would probably, if you're you know managing complex production systems, um, you'd probably wanna take some additional steps to move your applications off of nodes that you're upgrading and you know, do your due diligence. Um, but the actual upgrade process itself is entirely automated through the upgrade command. All right. And Does that someone, is that, I was answering the right question there. Just, I, I believe yeah. so. Uh, let, us awesome. know, um, let us know in the chat if, sure. if you have a, a follow-up question or anything like that to that. Um, so a couple more are still coming in. Sure. And let me know if you want to just get back to your demo. That's fine too. Yeah, we, no. can, we can hold off. Okay. Um, <laughs> so uh, someone was noticing that um, are the are the worker node configs correct? They seem, they, re they reference what seems to be the same group. Yeah, that was a shortcut that I took. <laughs> Good find. <laughs> um, so you, you can do that if you want. So if you want your worker node group configurations to reference the same machine config, you can do that. Um, and there are other going to be other features at the level of the worker node group configuration that will make that make more sense, right? Like you'll be able to apply node labels or taints at that level and then have one, so they could be different there, but then have the same config under the backing infrastructure. Yeah. Okay. Uh, for EKS anywhere, will all, will will the binary that can be deployed on prem or in air gapped environments be kept in sync with the EKS version in AWS, or will there be some drift there? Um, yeah, that's a good question. I mean, I think as things stand right now, if you had an air gap deployment, you know, it would be 
uh, sort of your responsibility at that point to run the necessary commands and update the necessary configuration in order to upgrade the cluster and keep it keep it in sync. You know, that's not something that we'll do automatically or do for you, especially if you're in a highly controlled environment. Um, but in terms of access to the latest binaries that you need and the latest container images, you know, that's all we're going to be publishing those regularly. We're going to be doing regular releases of EKS distro and of EKS anywhere um, that'll allow you to get access to that. Yeah, I think King didn't comment it. I think this question is really asking if the EKSA distribution will fall behind EKS upstream or not. Uh, no, we're going to be in we're going to be in lockstep with uh, with EKS. Um, I mean, we're I using EKS distro, so we're using the same thing. Yeah. Right. And then uh, Peter's asking, what about GitHub Connect out of sync with version of Kubernetes upgrade due to deprivations, deprivations in the API call to the new Kubernetes system? Yeah, I mean, that's a good question, right? Like, I think that right now, the um, responsibility for monitoring the health of the Flux component sort of falls to the customer, right? If you're using GitOps right now, we don't have a component that is monitoring your Flux installation for, you know, GitHub API disruptions or, you know, failures due to misconfiguration. Um, and you could, yeah, you could see that fall out of sync if there was a problem that didn't go uh, detected. I think as time goes on, we're gonna be releasing more and more add-ons that are gonna include a lot of observability stuff. So I think that'll uh, help. Um, and the other thing to note is that EKSA is open source and free to use, right? And you can use it anywhere, um, but you can also get support, right? That's that's one of the big use cases here is you can get enterprise support from AWS for your EKSA clusters. And anything that we provide and package, in this case, including the Flux installation, the GitOps configuration would be under that support agreement. Very good. I think that is all the questions that we awesome. have for now. I'll let you get back cool. to your demo. Yeah, I mean, I don't have a whole lot more. I think that folks who are watching here uh, saw what happened, right? I hope that, you know, it didn't just magically appear that we have like additional worker nodes now. Um, you know, these came up, you know, we have, we can see in the machine deployments, they're all running, they're ready, they're updated. Uh, we've got the appropriate number. Um, we've got two in WNGC2 and three in excuse me, WNGC1. So that's uh, that's what we want, right? And we can do things like, you know, get log and you'll see other stuff, me prepping for my demo here in the log. Um, but like we can look and see that I have this commit to scale the worker node groups. Um, earlier, I removed a worker node group configuration. I'm not gonna do that now, but I was playing around. Uh, but so we could actually look at the get log to see the history of the cluster, which is, I think, really valuable here. Um, yeah, I mean, if we want, you know, we can, you know, scale it back down. We've modified that cluster file. And then we'll see the cluster bring itself back down. Um, so I know that's gonna be thrilling to watch, but I won't make you watch it. So let me just uh, stop sharing my screen and get to the end of my slides here. And then we can you know, finish up with any questions and just maybe open up to a conversation if, if that's what we want. Okay, where are my PowerPoint? There we go. All right. So thank you, everybody. Thanks for coming. Really happy to share this with you. Really excited to be working on EKS Anywhere, working with Flux in the community, um, looking for more opportunities to contribute back to the community and get involved. You got questions, email me, budris at amazon.com. Uh, find me on LinkedIn, find me on GitHub, follow me um, if you want to you know, watch me do my job in real time. Uh, you know. Didn't like the demo, open a GitHub issue, please. You know, let me know. 
Um, and you can find out more about our roadmap, about where we're going, about what we're like as people by looking at our issues and looking at our commits and our various conversations that are all out there. Uh, yeah, and so that's that. Um, I hope that was that was useful. Actually, Dan, leave that up for uh, oh, another yeah. second or two here. And sure I'll thing. put it out there. If anyone has any other questions, please um, type them into the chat now as you're I'm mean, sure. about 13 minutes left before I completely cut us off. But if we're if we're done, that's fine too. But if you have any last burning questions, I am seeing um, uh, when will Bitbucket support be added is a question that I'm seeing here in the chat. Sure. Yeah. So uh, I think that's going to be happening pretty soon. I can't give you a date for it, um, but we're going to be working on a generic Git provider that will allow you to use any standard get connection with an SSH key uh, to bootstrap Flux. Um, there is a question about the recording. So we're gonna get that posted as soon as we can. We usually give ourselves about 24 hours. Sometimes it takes a little bit longer depending on how much is on our plates. Um, so we'll get that that you, this recording posted as soon as possible. Uh, you will get an email with follow-up uh, that includes hopefully Dan slides that he will send to me uh, and um, as well as the recording link. Um, so uh, another comment here, I did not see any Git merge. That was probably because you were directly pushing to the main branch. Yes, that's right. Yeah, right. I, for the sake of simplicity, I was just, you know, pushing to the main branch, full disclosure, get your PRs reviewed. Don't do, don't do what I just did, unless you're doing yeah. a demo. <laughs> and then what, uh, what, are your, what are your thoughts on using Flux with Kubernetes upgrades? Yeah, so uh, that's an interesting problem, right? And I think we're working on that right now. Right now, the official path to Kubernetes upgrades with EKS Anywhere is through the EKS Cuddle Anywhere upgrade command. Um, and that's the most uh, effective and stable method to do it right now. Great. And then just some kudos that from folks that uh, they enjoyed your presentation and this was really helpful. So Great. awesome. Yeah. Thanks and I everybody. just want to make a quick, quick shout out to my colleague, uh, Joey Wang, who's I've worked with really closely on a lot of this GitOps ops stuff. Um, and she's really helped me out with uh, this presentation and all the work we've done together. So awesome. Sweet. Okay, great. Well, I will uh, I will end it there. Thank you so much, Dan. And thanks, Joey, for connecting us. Um, and thanks, everyone, for joining the call today. Again, you'll get a follow-up email with all of the details. Um, and yeah, if you have any questions regarding any of this, feel free to reach out to me. Feel free to reach out to Dan. And uh, we'll see you next time around. Thanks so Thank much. Thank you, everyone.